folks, I've come all the way to New York City in search of their best rated video game stores to answer three questions. Number one, do these stores really live up to the hype? Number two, why did my parents never love me? And number three, are New York video game prices really that high? And to answer those questions, we're starting out at Video Games New York, which has 1,200 reviews and 4.6 stars on Google. Folks, I've got to say, this store is probably maybe 15 feet tall. I don't know if I've ever seen a store utilize their vertical space better. This is wild. Look at this recent gen selection. I don't know if I've ever seen a switch section bigger than this. And the craziest thing is it goes on over here. Look at this. Just rows and rows of brand new switch inventory. And it keeps going down here. Look at that. So we've got the like main counter over here and then coming over here, we've got all the standard like third party accessories that you'll always see at stores. Bunch of guides down here and then more cases, glass cases, almost all their games it looks like like R in cases, and a bunch of DS, 3DS, a lot of complete stuff down here too, wow. And then coming over here, we've got a bunch of, okay, looks like we have imports here, a bunch of PSP and PS3. And then folks, right over to the right of the entrance down here, I found their little factory sealed section. You guys know those always pique my interest. Looks like we've got Fortune Street for 160, Spider-Man for 110. Ooh, Breath of the Wild on Wii U for 200 down there. Ooh, even a black label GameCube game for 200 as well. Now the store's located in Manhattan, so it makes sense. I shouldn't be surprised that they're using every inch of vertical space that they have. I'm wandering into uh, the farthest corner of the store here with looks like a bunch of Genesis games, some cartridge stuff in the back. This is some of the only stuff I've seen that's not actually in a glass case. And also on this side looks like we have some more common used PS3, PS4, Xbox stuff back here. It looks like nothing really over 10 bucks. Oh, and folks, I've also spotted another small sealed section up here here of PlayStation stuff. Looks like they've got PS, oh no, that's used up there. This stuff here, the front facing is mostly factory sealed. But I've gotta say, I think my favorite part of this whole store is this little corner, which is three solid walls of custom cases for mid to high dollar games. I don't know what it is, there's something really exciting about this many games jammed this close together, but this little corner is also big enough that multiple people could browse without feeling too claustrophobic. Now, in the reviews that I read, everybody was raving about the selection and the service in this location. Really, the only qualm that anyone had was, unsurprisingly, of the prices. And given that there are a good number of front-facing games right here, I think this could be a good chance to do a little bit of market price analysis. For example, this Tetris right here is 19 bucks. I find this most often for, like, like 10 to 15 at conventions and stores. This Pokemon Gold though is 50 bucks, which assuming it has a new battery is honestly kind of right on market price. Mario Bros 2 and 3 I found are normally like 20 to 25 dollars, but then again, Punch-Out is normally like a 40 dollar game or so. This Mario All-Stars here is 60, which is pushing it a little bit for me because that's normally like a 35 or 40 dollar game. But I gotta be honest, as cheap as I am, I wouldn't really expect anything else from a store in the middle of one of the biggest cities in the world. And they've been here for over 17 years, so Clearly their clientele doesn't mind too much. And look, I just stumbled upon their uh, Nintendo Power, oh, and apparently Mad Magazine section. I love seeing a good selection of these at retro stores. I think they make such cool, relatively affordable little pieces that you can throw in a coffee table on your game room. I actually have a few on mine right now, and folks, look behind me. This is one of the biggest Vita sections I've ever seen. I also just realized that they have all of their lower dollar games stashed in these banker boxes down for people to dig underneath the shelves, which I think is honestly a really cool way to do it, like give people the actual bin digging, physical game hunting experience while still keeping all of the mid to higher dollar stuff secure. <laughs> Yuda. Okay, I've been pretty on board with the pricing so far, but I do have to admit 200 bucks for a DS Lite is a little bit rough, although they do have some really cool custom shells here. Well, folks, Video Games New York definitely didn't disappoint. A delightful little retro store and their employees were fantastic. 
And the craziest thing is the other stops that we have to go to today are both rated even higher. Now folks, as thrilled as I am to be on this mission with you today, I feel like this is a good time to maybe confess, I hate big cities. Like, I don't know, something about the crowds and the construction and the traffic and the prices and the crime and the general squalor just doesn't really appeal to me. And this always stresses me out too. Like, I'm trying to find a bus stop right now. It, my phone is telling me I'm literally like, look at this, I'm literally in the bus stop, but where is it? I do not see it. Wait a second, is that it? <laughs> Did I just miss the bus over there? Okay, I do see one right over there under the bridge, but I don't think that's the same thing. Ah, see, I found it. It was conveniently located right behind this large pole. And boy, this guy's been busy, jeez. What a lovely little neighborhood we've stumbled into here, folks. That is so random. The next place we're going is called Brooklyn Video Games. It's got 4.8 stars on Google reviews. The storefront looks great, and it seems like they should have a pretty killer selection as well. I just spoke to the managers. They said they actually started this business eight years ago out of their home, outgrew it and started subleasing from a little Photoshop. And within a year, they outgrew that and moved to this space about seven years ago. And the best part is they've even expanded to a second location with an arcade that's also in Brooklyn, like a few blocks down the road. And folks, I've got to say, I'm pretty surprised. Besides the consoles, the prices here are pretty close to what I'd see even like in Kentucky. Now folks, I haven't really been looking for anything to flip today, not because I don't think it can be found, but because I literally only have this backpack and I've got to travel a couple hours back to the van after this. But I am kind of looking for something small to remember my time here by, and I think this sticker may be just the right thing. Also, we need to find one Switch game for the trade shelf. And it looks like their selection here is honestly really solid. I think what I'm leaning towards is Double Dragon four there for 45 because if we're looking to trade it for a grail eventually with a bunch of other stuff I think limited run stuff is likely to have a little bit better trade value and folks check this out I asked what their rarest games in the store were and he pulled out these these are crazy look at the prices here box neo geo games that is just unreal well thank you so much for showing me I appreciate it well folks that place was pretty much the opposite of the first one lower inventory but better prices that's honestly pretty much what I see anywhere I go in the country my favorite part though was I asked him what games sell best for them and he said four player games because they have a ton of families that come in there looking for games to play together. I thought that was really sweet. Also, I wanted to ask, do you think it's a bad thing that I'm pretty much willfully dehydrating myself so I don't have to use the bathroom again? I made the mistake of trying to earlier and I swear the amount of time that it took me to find a place to squeeze the lemon in this city was beyond me. Okay, so I think we're here, which means we need to go here. Yeah, but at least my mom loves me. And folks, I think it is safe to say we've found our destination with the NES themed AC unit and the massive Mario mural. Folks, I don't know if I mentioned this store is called Brooklyn Game Shack. And one of the first things that I'm noticing is a lot of the games here are also very affordable. They've also got kind of a similar crate organization system for a lot of their more common lower dollar games. Another good sign, at least for bargain hunters like me, is seeing multiple of the same game priced at different price points. Because what that suggests is that they're not likely going around and repricing everything constantly. So some of the prices on here might be old. Like right off the bat here, folks, I spied this Afro Samurai for 15 bucks. The lowest copy of this that I found on Amazon Complete was 30 bucks. So there definitely are some deals to be found here. Also cool that they're prioritizing customer experience here with this huge arcade cabinet, despite working with some pretty significant space restrictions. Love to see that. Folks coming down into the glass case for the higher dollar games here. One that I saw right off the bat, Rhythm Heaven on the DS for 92 and it is in fact sealed. And check this out folks, 
132 after fees on Amazon. And folks, you know I'm gonna say it, I can't not say it, opportunity is every. And did I mention that at 4.9 stars on Google, this is the single best rated video game store in the city, and I'm definitely starting to see why. I mean, look at this for example. This DS and 3DS section, all complete games. I don't see this kind of selection anywhere in Lexington, Kentucky. And it's honestly making me a little bit jealous because I mean, 38 bucks for a complete and clean Kirby's Mass Attack, like that's just a solid deal. You guys are gonna have to be honest with me though. Am I like visibly sweaty? at this moment because not only am I very excited to be here, but as it turns out, these jeans were not the best idea. Oh, but we're going down again because look at what I just found. Classic cheat codes book. Wow, for NES games nonetheless. I love finding little stuff like this. Also gotta love seeing the meticulous alphabetical organization of everything so it's super easy and quick to find whatever game you may be looking for. Folks, that's the first thing I've seen that it appears definitely goes for a premium out here. Nice condition, original GameCube controllers. I bet the Smash scene is super strong out here. Well, folks, not only did Lewis, the owner, give me a couple dollars off of Rhythm Heaven without me even asking for it, but I also had to ask him how. How is it possible to have so many reviews and have almost everybody absolutely love your store? And I just loved what he said. He said, man, I just try to be honest with everyone. I treat everyone fair. I pay better than anyone else and my prices are still really reasonable. And if a game sucks, I'll tell people rather than just trying to sell anything at any cost. And I just love hearing those kinds of values from a fellow small business owner. So if any of you guys are in New York, definitely stop by all of the stores that I was at today. If you wanna see the time I visited the best video game stores in my home state of Kentucky, I'm going to link that video right down here and I'll catch you guys on the flip.